Hi there, Bruce Simpson. Today I want to talk to you about the Tokoro Airfield. Here it is, Tokoro Airfield. Simple. Here's the tower. You've all seen the tower on my XJet channel tens of millions of times. It's been seen on YouTube. And this is the official designator for the Tokoro Airfield, NZTO. If you're North American, it's NZTO. This is the registration number given to the airfield because it is a registered airfield. And as a regi registered airfield, it has a special status. A certain number of regulations apply to, to registered airfields that don't apply to other airfields. One of those regulations is CAA 101, which has as part of it a requirement that anybody who flies a model at a registered airfield or within four kilometers of a registered airfield must have a proficiency qualification known as WINGS. Now, here in New Zealand, the only organization authorized to issue WINGS is Model Flying New Zealand, the national model flying body. And as Regular viewers know, I've had a bit of a fallout with model flying New Zealand. We don't see eye to eye on a few things, and we're not gonna relitigate the whole thing, but suffice to say, they've made their minds up, and they're not going to change them anytime soon. I had a meeting with the new president of model flying New Zealand. He's a nice guy, we get on very well. You know, we discuss things, we're both keen to promote the hobby. You know, there's a lot of common ground, but unfortunately, the organization, as an organization, has made up its mind, it has a position on this, and it's not going to change in the foreseeable future. So, have to adapt, have to learn to live with that. And this is what I plan to do. Now, as I say, NZTO, it's a registered airfield, but unfortunately, as an airfield, it really is a desert. There's not much happens here. Just to fill you in, um, there are two locals that have aircraft here and fly from here. Two, just two. And they fly very infrequently. I think the last time I saw one of those locals fly from here was two weeks ago. And we've had, there's been a bit of bad weather, but there's been some good weather too. And on average, I'd say the locals fly probably once every 10 days, once every two weeks. So, and they fly away, fly back. That's it. Um, not a lot of activity. Now, there are some other aircraft hangar at the airfield. They're owned by people who live outside the district. But again, there's not many, and they don't fly very often. The most frequent flyer is a guy who has a tech name. He flies probably in the summer, maybe twice a week. You know, flies off for a coffee somewhere else in the country, flies back. Okay, it's not a busy airfield. There are no scheduled air services to or from this airfield. There is no flight training takes place at this airfield. There, there's nothing here except a strip of tarmac, some hangars, and a toilet. Now the toilet was installed a year or two ago. Uh, it's a public toilet, but it's in a restricted area. So really, the only people who use that toilet most of the time are people who are flying overhead on their way to somewhere else, get caught short, drop in, have a pee, and then fly off again. That's Tokoro Airfield's one attraction. It's a toilet. Not very, you know, an, not, very an env not really an enviable attraction, is it? I mean, you'd want to be known for a lot more than just having a toilet, but that's the situation at the moment. There's no fuel here. There's nothing to bring people in. And there's no real plan to do that. There is a plan, but it's not going to happen. Now, um, Things are worse because you might think, well, okay, well, things have gone to improve, but they are not. I've been here for 10 years. I've been flying models here for 10 years, never injured anybody, never damaged any third party property, never posed a risk to anybody for 10 years. And during that time, the airfield has actually declined in use. Now, the major users of this airfield have been model flyers. You've seen on the XJ channel, dozens, sometimes, you know, lots more than that people come to Tokoro Airfield to fly models. Well, they used to, they used to, but it's not so much now. The South Waikato Model Air Club was a busy club. It was a huge club. It had 160 worldwide virtual members and it had probably nearly 40 local members. When I say local, some people drove for an hour or two to get here because it was such a fun place to fly. That, well, the ass fell out of that. And now on a weekend, you might see two, three, on a busy weekend, four people flying models here. That's about it. So yeah, unfortunately that, you know, and that's all because of this fact that it's controlled by CAA and you've got to have these wings and things and it, you know, it's just, it's become a bit of a problem to a lot of people because a lot of people aren't flying in clubs anymore. There are more people now who fly outside of the club scene than in the club scene. We've got people who, you know, buy foamies and fly in parks. They don't need to join a national body or a club. They have a good time. They can't fly at this airfield. They don't have wings. So as the membership drifts towards the park flyer end of the spectrum, the number of people who fly models here reduces because they can't. Now, things get worse here. As I say, the airfield has actually gone downhill. Um, just three weeks ago, uh, a guy had a hangar at the airfield, sold his microlight, left an empty hangar, sold it, can't afford to keep it 
flying anymore, can't afford the costs and the fees and the, you know, the expenses involved in aviation. That's a common thing. I get a lot of pilots I speak to who say, no, we, you know, we, we don't fly much anymore or we're not flying anymore or we've sold our planes because it's just too damn expensive. Fuel costs have gone through the roof. The cost of maintaining your pilot's license has gone through the roof. I think it's gone up threefold or something like that. Silly, silly price increases. The cost of keeping an aircraft airworthy has gone through the roof. Um, all these things are so expensive that most people can't afford them. Certainly not in a small community like Tokoroa, where there's a lot of poor people here. There's a lot of people unemployed. There's a lot of people who work on minimum wage. They're not going to be people flying. That's why there are only two locals that fly here infrequently. So, as I say, um, one guy sold his microlight, sold his plane, given up. Another guy put his plane on a trailer and took it to another airfield because, as I said, there's nothing at this airfield. There's no reason to stay here. There's no fuel. There's no cafe, there's no picnic tables, there's nothing. It's just a piece of tarmac in a grassy field. So I've been talking to some of the local councillors, the politicians, and they're also asking, does this town really need an airfield? I mean, let's be honest, if only two locals are using it, why are 30,000 others contributing to the very significant cost associated with keeping this airfield active and keeping it running? And that's a very valid question. Now, one of the problems with this NZTO thing and all the rules and regulations is that the local town, Tokoroa, it's a town, 10,000 people roughly. Most of the houses in Tokara are within four kilometers of this airfield. What does that mean? Well, you might think oh, it doesn't mean much, but it does because, for example, we've got Christmas coming up in the next week, couple of weeks, it's going to be Christmas. And on Christmas morning, kids are gonna open presents and in those boxes, some of them will find coaxial helicopters because they've been advertised quite heavily here. It might be a model plane or two. And so what are they going to do? Well, of course, kids are kids. They wanna go outside and fly it in the backyard, but they can't. It's illegal because NZTO means you cannot fly any model that weighs more than 100 grams within four kilometers of an airfield. And most of the houses are within four kilometers of an airfield. Now, I know most of you are saying, oh, he's just been stupid because no one's gonna be wandering around looking over fences and writing out bloody um, prosecution notices for kids flying helicopters in their backyard. And you're dead right, 100% dead right. But think a bit further. Little Johnny gets his coaxial helicopter, never flown one before, nails the throttle, up it goes, bit of wind, drifts across, smack into the neighbor's plate glass window, smash, hundreds of dollars of damage. Who's gonna pay for it? Oh, insurance, of course. But hang on, you know what insurance companies are like? They come along, they say, oh, model helicopter, hang on a minute, you were flying within four kilometers of a registered airfield. You're not covered because you were breaking the law. Same might happen, little helicopter drifts out into the street, car swerves to avoid it, hits another car, two cars wrecked. The insurance companies say, whoa, no, we're not covering that. The, person, the kid flying the helicopter or his parents, they have to pay for it because he was in breach of CAA 101, the regulations. He was not allowed to fly that helicopter within four kilometers of an airfield. So yes, there won't be people peering over fences and writing out offense notices, but there will, there could well be a very real cost to having this airfield so close to the town for kids and their parents on Christmas day. That's not fair, that's not right. It shouldn't be like that. Because remember, only two locals fly aircraft from here, only two, and they do it infrequently. So here's my plan. This, I have a plan, of course, and this is my plan. I want to get rid of the airfield. Well, no, not strictly true. I want to get rid of that part of the airfield, okay? Suddenly, it's no longer a registered airfield. It's still an airfield, look, it's still there. If you deregister an airfield, a man from CAA does not come along, roll it up, put it in a bag, take it away so nobody can use it. No, it simply becomes an unregistered airfield. The two locals and a few others who occasionally use the airfield, they can still use it. Nothing stops them. They can still land, they can still take off, they can still get their planes out of their hangars, they can still you know, fly away, they can fly back. Nothing changes for those people. Still 100% legal, still full access. Brilliant, they don't lose. So who does lose? Well, nobody to be honest, because when you deregister the airfield, suddenly, the council apparently will save five and a half thousand dollars a year for a start. So the council who are currently bitching and moaning because they have to keep pouring money into this airfield, well, they don't have to pour so much money and they're saving five and a half grand right from the get go. That's gotta be a bonus. Also, because it's no longer registered, it doesn't have to be maintained to the same standard. It's not a registered airfield, so there are no standards. You can just, you know, keep it maintained to whatever standard you want. And given that this is an airfield used for other activities like drag racing, which rips the snot out of the tarmac, then not having it registered means you don't have to spend $107,000 next year resealing it as the council had planned to. No, you just patch up the holes 
and then the car club can still rip the snot out of it. If you reseal the airfield, are you going to let the car club continue running their drag races? Ripping the snot out of your brand new $107,000 tarmac runway? I don't know if they will or not. If they do, that's bloody stupid. If they don't, then the car club has lost the use of a community resource and that's not fair. So, either way, that's not good. Remove NZTO, everybody wins. The car club can use it. The, the local property taxes won't have to go towards paying for this black hole, the sinkhole that they keep pouring lots of money into. So that's all I want to do, remove the registration. And I can't see why anybody would object to that. Nobody in their right minds would object to that because of all the benefits. Because now, kids, Christmas morning, no NZTO, they can fly their damn helicopters in the backyard and they can take it down to the park and fly it down the park. They can do whatever they want because they're not breaking any laws. Suddenly it decriminalizes the kids of the town. That's pretty important. I think everyone should support that. So what are we going to use, what are we going to replace that NZTO with? I mean, looks a bit of a bare space here. Well, I want to replace it with this. With TIMP. Here we go. And what is TIMP? Well, it is the Tokoro International Model Park. Yep, I'm not kidding, that's it, Tokoro International Model Park. Over the years, dozens of people have come out to New Zealand from all over the world because they've seen the YouTube channel's videos on my XJet channel. And they've said, oh, we'd really like to go to New Zealand and meet Bruce and Barry and some of the others and maybe even have a fly. And they do. They come out here from America, from the UK, from Europe, from South Africa, from everywhere. And they park themselves in a motel down here and they come out and see us. And Barry and I are here. Fly our AXNs. Have a plane. Have, you know, have a plane. Go and have some fun. And they do. And they've had a lot of fun. That has been the case until now. But because of this wings thing and because I don't have my wings, can't do that anymore. I can't supervise people because they don't have wings. So there's no point in these people coming now unless we take away NZTO and put TIMP in place of it. So that's what I need to convince the council of that we can make this thing a go, Tokoro International Model Park. And it'll have numerous benefits for everybody. Now, we've just had new elections. New politicians have been um, begging for our votes to get into the council and control what goes on here. And the, a lot of the old ones got kicked out because they were getting tired and jaded and, you know, we've got new blood and they're all keen. And most of them have run on the platforms of, we want to promote this district and we want to support the local businesses here. And this will be our way of saying, here's your chance to put your money where your mouth is. Here's your chance to honour your pledges. Because if we have the Tokoro International Model Park, we can promote it. It be can become a tra an attraction for what is otherwise just a toilet in a paddock. Turn that toilet in a paddock, it becomes an international model park. People will still come from all over the world. In fact, more will come because there'll be fewer restrictions on what they can do and what they can't do. And that means that when they come to Tokoro, they'll stay in the motels. They'll eat at the restaurants, they'll shop in the local shops. That'll be supporting local business. And of course, promoting the district. So there we go, the politicians can hardly say no to such an initiative. Especially when you consider there's no risk to this plan. There is no downside, there are no losers. The full-size pilots still get an airfield. Nobody loses. The kids are decriminalized. Nobody loses. I can fly. Nobody loses. So there's no risk either. The biggest risk is that, wow, they'll save themselves five and a half thousand dollars by not re-registering the airfield. That's not a risk. So there are no downsides. We've got to convince them of this. I've already spoken to the chief executive officer of the council, but I think he just lacks vision. I think, you know, he's a bureaucrat. I think he's just used to dealing with numbers and things. He's not, look, not used to looking at things and getting the big picture and getting excited and driving things. And that's what I want to do. I want to drive this. I want to make it go. So the, council, the, the chief executive officer said, no, oh, nah. He couldn't find fault. I did a complete business plan for him. He could not find any fault with my business plan. He could not identify any risk associated with what was going on. He could not identify any losers in this whole scenario. But he still wasn't having a bean of it. Because it's me, maybe? I don't know. So we need to convince the new councillors, we need to go to them with something that they cannot ignore. And this is why I'm making this video. This is how you can help me. Now remember, a lot of you have asked on the various videos and sent me emails saying, how can we help? What can we do to help your situation? Get you back in the air. And they've said, can we email the council? Can we email Model Flying New Zealand? Can we email CAA? And I said, no, no, don't do that. These people have already made their positions clear. If you just annoy them, it's not going to change anything and it just makes the situation worse. I've said, don't annoy them, just leave them alone. And so that's, nothing could be done. But now, now you can do something. If you look in the description of this video, there's an email address. 
What I would like you to do, if you really want to support me and, and decriminalise the children of this town and create the world's best international model park, I want you to go and send an email to that address. I want you also to pledge $10. You have to pledge $10. I'm sorry, there's, there's money involved, but you won't have to pay. Send no money now. I just want you to pledge your promise that if this goes ahead, you will send $10 because I want you to write an email, and don't word it exactly like this, but this is the gist of what I want you to put. My name is whoever you are, I live wherever you live, and I would very much like to see the creation of the Tokoro International Model Park in Tokoro, New Zealand. To that end, I am prepared to pledge $10 US to help with the formation of the Tokoro International Model Park. And if I come to New Zealand, well, no, I would very much like to come to New Zealand and use the facilities provided by the park while staying in local motels, dining at local restaurants and shopping in the local shops. That's all you have to do. What we need to do is convince the councillors that there are people out there like you who feel so passionately like myself about this that you're prepared to put your money where your mouth is. It's only 10 bucks. It's only 10 bucks from you people, but if we get enough, it becomes a substantial amount of money. Also, you've got to remember that certainly the bureaucrats involved, you know, the, the, the People who actually, like the CEO and the others, they're a bit out of touch with modern technology, a lot of them. You know, they're, they're well-intentioned perhaps, but they just don't have a connection with modern technology. So what I want to do, what I plan to do, is every email you send me, I will print it out on a sheet of paper. So if, we, if I get 500 emails, 500 pledges, it's a ream of paper. It's a fairly sizable chunk of paper. If I get 1,000, it's two reams. If I get 3,000, it's six reams of paper. That's a big log of wood because that's what these people will understand. If I drop that on the desk in front of them at a full meeting of the council and say, these are the people who support this initiative, and more than that, they're even prepared to put money into it, and they say they want to come to Tokoro, they want to spend money in the town, they want to stay at the motels, they want to shop, they want to buy food here, these people are putting their money where their mouth is, how can they possibly say no to that? But when you get a stack of paper this high, that has real weight, it has real substance. It's not like an email that arrives in your in tray and you go delete, or a CD that someone gives you with a thousand emails on it and you just use it as a drink coaster. No, a stack of paper like that has some real substance. It's hard to ignore that. So that's what I want to do. I want to take that stack of paper, which each letter, each sheet of paper is an email from you guys, and I want to show them that there is a lot of support for this initiative, a lot of support to decriminalise the children of this town who might want to fly models, a lot of support to create a, a world international model park that anyone can come to and fly models here. And what do you get for your 10 bucks? Because, okay, you, you know, you might want something for your 10 bucks. Well, I'll tell you what you get. You would get foundation membership to the model park. What does it mean? Well, we don't know exactly yet because it has to be set up. But I would envisage that that would mean that if you come to New Zealand and you want to use the model park, you'll be able to use it for free or at least with a very deep discount because you're a foundation member and that carries some weight. So if you come to the Tokoro International Model Park, you'd be able to fly models here. But hang on, what models? Well, for a start, over the years as I've been reviewing stuff, I've got a heap of models here. And when people have come in the past, we've said, here, grab a model, grab an AXN, come out and fly with us. And the same would happen, but more so. I've got EDFs, I've got DLGs, I've got gas planes, I've got jets, you know, I've got trainers, I've got the whole lock, stock and barrel here. If you come out to the Tokyo International Model Park, we'll hook you up with a model, set a radio gear, go and fly. If you're not that confident, say you're a park flyer. Say you've been flying in parks all your life, foamies, and you've really wanted to have a go with a gas plane, but you don't know anybody with a gas plane, and you're not a part of a club, so there's no one else there that's got gas planes, it's just flying parks. You can come out here and say, oh, I'd like to fly the gas plane. I'll say, fine, take it out, fuel it up. We'll put you on the buddy box until you're comfortable. Away you go, have a fly. That's what you'll get for your 10 bucks. Access to all this. I'm happy to you know, provide models and provide my time and support for free. I'm not gonna charge anybody. Because when you pay, the, if, if this all goes ahead and the $10 is, you, know, you, you have to honor your pledge and pay your money, it's not gonna go to me. I'm not gonna get a penny of it. I don't want a penny of it. My payback is the fact that I get back in the air, I get to take videos of people having fun with RC models, and then it just it goes on my YouTube channel, and YouTube pays me a tiny, tiny amount of money, but it means I can keep on doing what I've wanted to do and I haven't been able to do recently. So that's how I win from this. Uh, the money will go into a separate fund, which will be for the administration and management of the International Model Park, so I won't get any of it. Um, the council will use that money to make sure there's facilities here, there's resources, and that everything is, you know, when you turn up, there's, it's here, it's still here and it's available to use. That's where the money will go. So that's what I'd like you to do, that's the reason I'd like you to do it, and that's what I hope the outcome will be. So, send the email, 
Send it now. If you know other people who fly models who would also be keen to support this initiative, support me, support the creation of the International Model Park, then get them to pledge as well. And remember, if this doesn't fly, if the councillors and, and the bureaucrats turn around and say, nah, not interested, we'd rather watch the tumbleweed, then you'll never have to pay your 10 bucks. It'll, it's a pledge you will not have to honour because you only have to honour it if this goes ahead. So you can just say, oh, didn't work. And I'll say, oh, didn't work. That's the end of it. But, but if we really get behind this, I'm pretty sure it's going to be damn hard for politicians to say, we're not interested in promoting the district. We're not interested in supporting local business. We lied when we ran for election because they didn't lie. They really are keen. These new politicians, they are really interested and excited. I've spoken to some of them. They are really keen to do something with this airfield other than just pay five and a half thousand dollars a year and, and, and charge the local property taxes so that two locals can fly at it. That's what they want to do. So let's get into it. Send your email. If you've got questions, stick them on the bottom of the video. If you've got comments, stick them on the bottom of the video. Give it a thumbs up so that other people will find it and go and tell everybody, you know, tell your Facebook mates, whatever. I'd like to get a stack of emails this big. I don't care if I have to spend $200 on printer ink. It's going to be worth it if we can get a big stack of emails from people saying, hey, I want to come to New Zealand. I want to use that model park. I'm willing to put 10 bucks to create it. And, you know, woohoo, that's what I want. Go for it. It's up to you now. You've asked if there's anything you can do. I've just told you what to do. Hopefully you guys will be right behind this and I'll be a very happy man. In the meantime, thank you. Merry Christmas. Not far away. See you soon.